In this set of slides, we are going to look at how we measure economic performance. And in this specific presentation, we explain how economic activity can be measured. So to measure the level of economic activity, we look at gross domestic product. So gross domestic product or GDP is the total value of all final goods and services produced within the boundaries of a country during a particular period, usually one year. So if we look at that definition, what does gross mean? Gross means that economists do not subtract all depreciation that happened to capital goods in order to generate that year's GDP. So we don't, for example, take into account the value of potholes in the roads, rust on machinery, equipment that broke. It's also important that we look at the total value of all final goods and services. So we have to measure it somehow and we use prices to measure the value of goods and services. So prices express the value of the goods. We only consider final goods and services. So for example, if we added everything that is used to make bread, like the flour and the yeast and the electricity, and then we add the value of the bread, we will be doing double counting. So we only take into account final goods and services. For example, only the final bread that is produced. We look at production within a particular country. So GDP is a geographical concept and that's why we call it domestic. It's only about what was produced within one country. And it refers to a particular period. It's a flow variable that is measured over a certain time and it's only concerned with new goods and services that was produced during this particular period. So there are three methods that we can use to calculate GDP. The production method, the expenditure method, and the income method. So the production method will add all the values in each step of the production line. So all the values that are added in different steps of the production line are added together to calculate GDP. For the expenditure method, we will only take into account the value of final goods and services. So we will add all of that together and that will give us the GDP. And then the income method will look at all the incomes earned by the factors of production in each step of the production line. We will add all of that together so the sum of these incomes will give us the GDP. What is important is that all these methods should give the same answer. It's just different ways to get to the same value of GDP. So to explain this, we are going to look at the production chain of honey. So we look at 300 bottles of honey that's produced. The farmer first collects the honey and then sells it to the person who will separate the honey from the honeycombs and sells it for 5,000 Rand. So of that 5,000 Rand, 2,000 will go towards the farmer for his labor and profit and 3,000 will go towards the bank for financing the farm. In other words, providing the land. So then this person who separated the honey from the honeycomb will sell it to the factory that's going to bottle the honey and that she sells it for 6,000 Rand. So the extra 1,000 Rand between the, that was the difference between the price at which she sells it and the price at which she bought it is for her labor. 
Then this factory that bottled the honey will sell it to the wholesaler for 9,000 Rand. So this extra 3,000 Rand that was added will go towards labor of this bottling company and 2,000 of that will go towards rent for the factory. Then the wholesaler will sell it to the retail shop for 10,000 Rand and the additional 1,000 Rand, 500 Rand of that goes towards rent and 500 Rand goes towards paying the person who transports the honey. And then finally, the retail shop will sell it to the consumers for 12,000 Rand. So an additional 2,000 Rand is made here, of which 1,000 Rand will go towards rent and 1,000 Rand towards labor. So now we are going to see how the, a production chain can be used to explain the different approaches to calculate the GDP. So if we look at this chain and we use the expenditure approach to measure GDP, we will only consider the value which was paid by the consumers. So the price at which the product is sold to the consumers is added to the GDP. So that if this is all that was produced in this economy, this honey, that's all that was produced, the value of GDP is equal to 12,000 Rand. If we use the income approach, we have to look at the income that was earned in each step of the production process by the different factors of production. So in this first step, the farmer earned 2,000 Rand and the bank earned 3,000 Rand, so a total of 5,000 Rand was earned. In this step, where the honey is separated from the honeycomb, a thousand rand was earned for labor. In the third step, where the factory bottled the honey, a thousand rand went towards labor and two thousand rand towards rent, so a total of three thousand rand income was earned. In the third step, the whole seller earned 500 Rand to pay for rent and 500 Rand to pay for the person who transported the honey. So a thousand Rand of income was earned. And in the next step, the retailer earned a thousand Rand in rent for rent and a thousand Rand was earned for labor. So to a total of 2000 Rand was earned as income in this step. So if we add all the income that was earned in the production process, our answer is 12,000 Rand, which is exactly the same as the price that was paid by the consumers. So you can see it doesn't matter whether we use the expenditure approach or the income approach, our answer is the same. Let's see what happens when we use the value added approach. So the former added 5,000 Rand of value. The person who separated the honey from the honeycomb added 1,000 Rand in value. 6,000 minus 5,000 is 1,000. The factory that bottled the honey added 3,000 Rand in value. 9,000 minus 6,000. The wholesaler added a thousand rand in value. That's the difference between ten and nine thousand rand. And the retailer added two thousand in value. So if we add all these values that was added, we once again get to the same answer of twelve thousand rand that was added to GDP. Now we've looked at the microeconomic principles to calculate the GDP, but we know that GDP is a macroeconomic concept. It measures production in the whole economy. So how will we use the expenditure approach 
to calculate GDP in the macro economy. In other words, the total value of GDP produced in the whole economy. So one way to do that is to add expenditure by all the different participants in the economy. So we add the value that was spent on consumption by households to the investment expenditure by business, I, and government expenditure, which we denote by the symbol G. So if we add these three together, household consumption, investment expenditure, and government expenditure, that gives us gross domestic expenditure. So it's all expenditure that took place within the boundaries of the country. But we know that some of the GDP that was produced in the country was also exported. So we also have to add exports. So this is added to gross domestic expenditure. And then we have to subtract imports because included in those different expenditures are goods that was produced outside the country. In other words, it does not form part of our domestic GDP. So imports have to be subtracted. So to calculate GDP, we have to add C plus I plus G plus X and then we subtract imports. That gives us expenditure on GDP and the value will be exactly the same as the GDP.